Oh. It's also the same for the uh, new drama, yes. uh, White Queen, which starred on the BBC last Sunday night. You know, this is set against the backdrop of The War of the Roses, and it's an adaptation that tells the story of commoner Elizabeth Woodville, uh, who's pursued by the rather pursued dashing... Is, pursued is pursued a bit is, of an understatement. Yes, King Edward IV. I sent a page boy to bring him to me tonight. I have a longing for him. So is this man then? I have to have you. I'm mad for you. Will you marry me? Are you the Queen of England? Well, she'd point out that she was hard to get, Max, wasn't she? She, she put up a bit of a she fight. She put up a bit of a fight, and then you said, well, you can be queen, and that sort of swung it, didn't I it? I think so, <laughs> but that's what made him attracted to her, the fact yeah. she put up a fight. Most women under those circumstances were obligated to the king, but she said no. Uh, yes, because the whole family went along with it. They sort of offered um, their, their, their children up, or their daughters up, to, to royalty. They sort of did, uh, especially for, from her family, which once was very important, but they were, they were thrown out of court, disgraced. So well, he went ahead and married her, but there was a huge disapproval. Well, it had massive political ramifications. If you're the king, you're expected to marry royalty, and, and that's, mm. deals were done in those days. So to marry for love was unheard of, especially someone from the, from the enemy camp. Mm. And this is where the scheming uh, comes into all of this, um, from Warwick the Kingmaker. King I remember Maker. my Ladybird book on Warwick the Kingmaker. Oh, Ladybird book. Yeah, and my history. That's where I did my research. <laughs> <laughs> that's did that's you have I to do. do a lot of research? Yeah, the Ladybird you? book. It's fine. Yeah. No, I did. We had to do it. We all had to do a bit. We, uh, I spent a lot of time in Foyle's bookshop. Yeah. Did you? Yeah, various medieval so, experts. Really? Yeah, you can go down there and say, is there anyone who's an expert on 15th century medieval history? And people sort of come out the corners of the rooms. And, and then you have a bit of a conversation. You say, tell me everything I need to know about Edward IV. Give me some books. So, the character, Edward, the way he looks, um, the way he was, how... How do you get into that personality? I was actually saying our previous item was about hairstyles, and um, and there was there was a, a hairstyle that was a suggestion that maybe you should do that was there, there was, and I was game for it. You know, make no mistake, it wasn't a vanity thing. They they made us these huge wigs, which was sort of ever so slightly mulletish. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I tried to get my you know head round it and and look in the mirror with a straight face, but thankfully it was other people who couldn't keep a straight face when they saw me. Yeah, that that, that put an end to that. So it was too much of a distraction. But it gives it, sorry, it just gives it a wee bit of a modern tone. I just wanted to know how you make something which could be quite um, dull, mm. let's face it, um, such an attractive drama for, for Sunday night television. The sex. <laughs> <laughs> you said it, not me. <laughs> well, I think, uh, you know, firstly, The War of the Roses is a fantastic fantastically rich period in history, but then we've got Philippa Gregory. You know, we've seen from the men's point of view before, we've heard about the battles, but Philippa brings it from the woman's perspective, and the, and the way women were forced to survive in this court, which was an incredibly hostile place, especially for women, frankly, uh, is, I think, incredibly interesting. They were very political, very skillful. They had to walk a fine line of controlling, but also remaining unseen and unheard. Yeah. We should point out, it isn't all sex scenes. But <laughs> <laughs> See, that seems to be any clips they've sent us. But, but how do you feel about that? Because they are quite, quite steamy sex scenes. Sex scenes. And, yeah, and I, know, I think you only met Rebecca, didn't you, just before you yeah. all started filming, so it's quite hard. I'll just it? say this, you have to get very used to walking around in a thong. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. And okay. you also have to get very used to walking around in suits of armour. I, I did, you know, like, well, you say, yeah, I in fact popped my shoulder. Uh, dislocated my shoulder blade during a battle scene. I had to elbow somebody in the face and it popped out. Didn't stop the scene though. Oh, carried on. Did someone have to pop it back in when you did it? It went back in on its, on its own. But I'm presuming that, I mean, that's obviously not full set of armour, but how heavy is it? Heavy enough to. Yeah. By the end of the day, you're yeah. a little worse for wear, but it was rubber, thank God, because in those days they had, didn't have steel, so it would have been cast iron. Yes. Yeah. Max, last week was, was episode one of ten mm -hmm. at Sunday night, nine o'clock. Here's a preview of what's happening this week. See, I'm hooked oh. on this. Yeah, it's brilliant. And also, we're talking there about suits of armour. You also had to horse ride, of course. Yes. And you got very close to your horse, didn't you? I did. He was called Fuego. He was a French stunt horse. And uh, we, he was offered uh, to be given to me, which I had to say no to because I live in London. I have no way to, to look after mm. a horse. But, yeah, we had a real connection. In fact, there was one day where we were filming a large battle scene and, uh, you know, there's 200 people there on set. And I came on set to do hair and makeup. And Fuego 
w wasn't tied up. You know, they're stunt horses, they stand where they, where, where they put them. And he saw me and just walked through the whole oh. scene, through stuntmen, through, you know, archers firing off their, their bows and arrows, came up behind me and just nudged me on the, oh. on the back as if to say, I'm here. Oh. The director's going, where's that horse come that from? Nice through in my cuts. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it was lovely. Well, I'm sure you never thought there'd be so much riding involved in a project uh, before you took it up. Great seeing you, Max. Thank you very much Thank indeed. Uh, we've got a fascinating story.